Can I come to the UK and practice as a nurse or midwife without having to write the IELTS? Well, um, in this video, I'm going to give an answer to this question. So if you are interested, why don't you come with me? Alright, welcome back. What I do on this channel is very simple. I talk about IELTS. I mean, I share my experience with regards to IELTS. I share my experience and perhaps the processes I have to go through to become a nurse, I mean a registered nurse in the UK. I feel like sharing my experience should go a long way to help, I mean, new IELTS takers and young nurses in Africa who are aspiring to basically practice nursing or midwifery in the UK. So if you want to have more of this, I will entreat you to subscribe to my YouTube channel and then be part of the family, okay? Um, there's a lot to learn on this channel. In as much as I talk about these things, I also share my experience about lifestyle and any other thing you have to know to probably, I mean, make your life better. So, um, let's dive into today's topic. Can I come to the UK without having to write IELTS? This is one of the questions that is hitting hard on my DM. And I think I have to probably move out of the shell to give an answer to this, okay? I believe you have this question in your mind as well. Um, and I'm going to tell you whatever thing you have to know about this. First of all, let me start this way. You see, IELTS is an English language test. And the reason why you have to write these exams is that you need it to, I mean, it's part of the requirements to become a nurse or midwife in the UK or in an English speaking country, being it Canada, USA, New Zealand, Ireland, and then perhaps, I mean, Australia, okay? So once you write this test and pass, you are given a test report form. And then what happens here is that having this form is a proof that you are good at the English language. You are proficient in speaking the English language. And that you can work in these countries, okay? Because, you know, your major language is the um, English. And as a matter of fact, you would want to know if you can communicate in English, okay? So, it's one of the basic requirements you must have to be able to start your process, especially if you want to become a nurse or midwife in the UK. And over the years, I mean, a lot of people have written these exams and passed. On the other hand, there are some who have written and failed. And I mean, I won't say they failed, but they didn't get the band score or the results they were looking for to carry out the process, okay? So, I mean, some eventually, I mean, have to give up. Others kept persisting and they had the band score they were looking for. Um, fast forward, what I want to say is that things are changing now. And I mean, there's a way to come to the UK without having to write the IELTS, especially if you are not comfortable writing it or probably you feel it's too difficult for you or um, if you've written on a number of occasions and you are still not seeing light at the end of the tunnel um, there's a possibility that you can come in here start practicing as a nurse or midwife without having to write the IELTS but there are some things you have to consider and that is what I'm going to talk about in this video so what I want to mean is that in as much as you are coming here to work as a nurse without having to write the IELTS um, there are some things you have to consider and for me, I think I have to share it with you um, to make an informed decision, okay? As to whether you are coming here with or without the IELTS. That is very, very important. So at this juncture, I would want you to pick your pen and paper and then start putting down points, okay? So I'm just going to rattle. Um, this video might not have any format, but I believe that at the end of this video, you have an answer to the question you have been asking all that long. As to whether you can come to the UK, start work without having to write the IELTS. So I must confess that it's still possible. I mean, I've had friends who have come in here without having to write the IELTS. But I believe that in the course of this video, I'll try as much as possible to share with you some of the stories, um, some of the experiences these friends of mine um, went through. And I believe that that will also help you to make an informed decision as to whether, I mean, it's advisable to write the IELTS or come in here and then, um, I mean, go through the next process. All right, let's start it this way. You can come to the UK without having to write the IELTS. But there are three things you have to consider. And I think, I mean, they are very, very important. Especially if, I mean, you've tried the IELTS a number of occasions and um, you haven't passed or you haven't had the required band score, okay? So the first thing you have to consider if you want to come to the UK without IELTS is your financial status. Because uh, what I've realized is that you will pay more than somebody who is coming in here with the IELTS, okay? So when I spoke to one or two friends who have come in here without the IELTS, 
I got to realize that they paid, I mean, huge amounts of money as compared to what I came in here with. Because I came in here with the IELTS and, you know, when I spoke to them about, I mean, their situation, when I wanted to find out, I mean, the nitty gritties of coming in here without the IELTS, I had to compare how much I paid to how much, I mean, they paid. And it was like, I mean, they paid huge amounts of money. So the first thing I would say is that if you want to come in here without the IELTS, then you should have, I mean, an amount of money, an appreciable amount of money at your bank because you are going to pay um, to probably get this dream come true, okay? There are agencies that would help you do this and they will require you to pay um, some registration fee, uh, which amounts to about £1,000, okay? And in as much as you are paying this, they also want you to pay an amount of money to help you start your UK um, registration. I mean, there are a lot of things they will promise you, but um, trust me, speaking to one of the friends, I got to realize that uh, whatever they said was on the contrary, okay, was on the opposite side. They never fulfilled, I mean, all that they said in the offer letter. So coming here with that IELTS, you have to look at the financial status. You are going to pay a lot of money and you must be prepared for that. So if you can't afford to, I mean, go through this uh, mess, then uh, what I would say is that you have to try out those to pass the IELTS because once you pass the IELTS, I mean, you know, the agency or the hospital that will be recruiting you will cater for about half of your cost. And that is why I had to pay something lesser than, I mean, the friend who came in here without the IELTS, okay? And then secondly, I also want you to um, know that it's not as if you are escaping the English proficiency routes, okay? Because, you know, to be able to register with the UK NMC or to become a registered nurse or midwife, what you have to do is that you have to have yourself or you have to have your name in the books of the um, UK NMC, okay? And, you know, once you register with the UK NMC, they will create a portal for you. So now what happens is that you need an English proficiency to fulfill this requirement, okay? So until you provide a proof of your English proficiency, the UK NMC portal will not be completed. What this means is that you may be working in the UK as a nurse, probably you may be in a care home or working in a private hospital, but your name may not be recognized by the UK NMC because you have not provided all the requirements or all the documents to possibly prove that you can communicate in English, okay? So what this means is that you will be a pre-registered nurse, a nurse without a pin, okay? So once we come to the UK without IELTS, your UK NMC registration is incomplete. Now what this means is that you are not fully a registered nurse until you write your, I mean, an English proficiency test as well as your OSCE. But then the truth of the matter is, if you are able to write your IELTS way back in your home country and uh, probably you pass, you are only coming to the UK to write your OSCE, which is the last exam probably to enable the UK NMC to issue you a PIN to classify you as a registered nurse. But once you come in here without the IELTS, what this means is that you have to find a way to actually prove your English proficiency. And speaking to one of my friends, I got to realize that once you get in here without the IELTS, you have to write the OET, which is, I mean, an alternative English language to IELTS, okay? It's also one of the English proficiencies the UK requires. So if you can't write the IELTS, they expect you to sit for the OET and they accept that as an English proficiency test, okay? So once you get in here without the IELTS, they will advise or probably um, you will be asked to write the OET in addition to the OSCE. And once you pass the OET and you pass your OSCE, your UK and MC portal will be complete and I mean, they will take it from there. But until you write an English proficiency test in here, your portal is incomplete and will be classified as a pre-registered nurse, okay? But then I have another concern to share here. You see, I usually advise that it's better you write the IELTS in your home country or you write an English proficiency test, not basically the IELTS. You can write the OET, you can write the IELTS, whichever way you think is easier for you, okay? But the unfortunate thing is that the OET is not probably registered or it's not available in some African countries. I know it's in Nigeria. Um, yeah, that's the only place I know. But I don't know of the other African countries as well. So the IELTS is the commonest, I mean, English proficiency test most people are sitting for. But if it's becoming very difficult for you, then you can consider the OET, okay? 
I always advise that it's better you write an English proficiency test in your country pass and then come in here with the hope that you are coming to write the OSCE because you see coming in here without the IELTS means that you have to find a way to write the OET and afterwards you have to write the OSCE as well or probably if you write the OSCE your NMC portal will still not be complete because you have to write the OET to Enable the EK and MC to further your process, I mean your registration process. Okay, so I think it's best you write an English proficiency test in your country, pass and then come in here and then look out for the OSCE rather than coming in here and then battling two sensitive exams. And the possibility or the probability that you will pass the OET on the first attempt is not really assured. Okay, so I mean you can consider this if you think. Um, it's best you come in here and I say for the OSCE as well as the OET, then that is the decision for you to make. Um, if you also think that it will be more convenient for you to pass an English proficiency test and then come in here and only sit for the OSCE, then I think this is a decision for you to make as well. All right, the third thing I also say is the 100% assurance. If you come to the UK with the hope of coming here to work as a nurse or midwife without having to write the IELTS, what happens here is that. The assurance that you become a registered nurse is very low as compared to somebody who came in here with IELTS. The reason is that, I mean, I've already explained this. You see, once you come in here with IELTS, you're only left with one exam to write, which is the OSCE, which is the practical version of the CBT you wrote in your home country. Okay. So once you pass the OSCE, the NMC is very happy to issue you a pin to be a registered nurse. So until you pass your OSCE, you are a pre-registered nurse. I mean, you don't have the pin to practice as a nurse, all right? So you can imagine, you coming in here without the IELTS or without an English proficiency test, you are coming to battle out with two sensitive exams, the OET and the OSCE. And the reason why I say that it is not 100% assured that you become a registered nurse is that, you see, you just have some people are struggling to pass the IELTS or to get a required band score. It's the same way, I mean, it might happen that you struggle to even pass the OET. And you know, you, you can't actually predict, okay? But then all I would say is that if you believe in yourself, if probably you are desperate to come in here and then you think that you can, I mean, go out, pass the OSCE or prepare for the OSCE alongside the OET, then that is fine. You can come in here and then, I mean, um, go through this process. But I should remember that once you move from your home country to the UK, your UK NMC registration is incomplete because you have not submitted an English proficiency test uh, as well as your OSCE. So once you even write the OSCE and pass, you still have to bear in mind that you've still not uploaded an English proficiency test or you have not proven yourself to be a good communicator in English. And as a matter of fact, um, your NMC portal or registration will still be incomplete. So until you pass the OET, you will still work as a pre-registered nurse, you will receive a pre-registered nurse salary, and you will be treated as a pre-registered nurse. Okay. So I believe that whatever I'm sharing with you here would probably help you make an informed decision as to whether you are coming in here with IELTS or without IELTS. But then to me, even if you should ask me which one is the best, I would advise that you try as much as possible to pass I mean, an English proficiency test in your country before coming in here okay because i mean there's a whole lot to preparing for the OSCE, and it's like we didn't have to i mean you shouldn't stress yourself um coming in here sitting for the OSCE as well as preparing for the oet i mean i can envision how tiring or how i mean stressful it would be so why don't you take the stretch by i mean writing as many times as you can pass and then come in here and then probably sit for the OSCE, and there you have the assurance that uh, once you pass the OSCE, you are good to go. I mean, you become a registered niche. Thank you very much for watching this video. Probably, I know there's one or two things in here that I've said that will go a long way to help you make an informed decision. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please make sure you are hitting the subscribe button so that you become part of the family. Uh, my name is Seth and I share my IELTS experience. I mean, you can explore my channel to see more of I mean, educative videos, okay? I mean, the process you have to go through to become a nurse in the UK, in Canada, and anywhere else. 
um i interview people who have been there and it's like i mean i talk based on their experience and what i know thank you very much hope to see my next video <music>